you're a former foreign minister, you're vice uh, premier, so you know you've got uh, presumably you've got a lot of experience in dealing with, with, with relations with Egypt. How big a how big a, a loss is Mubarak's departure for Israel? We would like to believe that the peace uh, <clears throat> treaty between Israel and Egypt is a treaty that is not uh, relying on uh, one uh, Egyptian president, and it uh, rely on the idea that those uh, both uh, peoples have decided to reconciliate, and uh, we uh, would like to believe that from now on it will uh, last uh, forever, and it doesn't matter who is in power. So uh, we will, uh, we were uh, very. Uh, satisfied to find out that uh, those who are uh, now uh, taking the lead there in Egypt have announced uh, very uh, clearly that they will keep all the agreements that were signed between Egypt and other countries and with Israel as well. But if there are, as they say, there are going to be elections in the next few months, in six months' time, and uh, a new uh, democratically elected government comes to power in Egypt, there is a possibility that there could be, uh, it could be led by the Muslim Brotherhood or it could be led by parties that are not so friendly to Israel. I think that what's uh, going on these days in the whole Middle East should bring us to some uh, other conclusions that does not really only between Israel and one uh, Arab country. I think it shows us that no matter which country we'll have a peace treaty with or which uh, people we are going to have peace treaty with, it should be based on security, security, and once again, security. Because finally, what will left or will be left forever, it's what the security that was given by the Arabs to the ends of the Israelis. I think that these days we are fully aware that what's going on in the Middle East is not really based on the Israeli-Arab conflict, because we can see that uh, the, the, the demonstrations there in Tunisia or in Egypt or in Yemen or in, uh, or in uh, Lebanon or uh, in Iran or wherever are not really connected to the Israeli-Arab conflict or to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We would like, of course, to have a peace with all the countries around us and we would like to have a peace treaty with the all Arab countries. But when we are moving toward a peace or uh, negotiations, that we are going to hold with those Arab countries, I believe that from now on security will be the most important issue in our view in order to find ways to take a progress or to make a progress in order to achieve an agreement with our neighbours. Well, undoubtedly, I mean, what you say about it, it's not Israel or the Palestinian issue that caused people to take the streets of, of, of Cairo and Alexandria. There's, of course. There's, there's little, I, I, I would agree with you, but there's no doubt either that the people who are on the streets of Cairo and Alexandria are no fans of Israel. People, I, I was there in, in Tahrir Square and I spoke to many young people and their attitude towards Israel is very hostile. I uh, hope that uh, those uh, countries that are asking to have peace with Israel after uh, they uh, came with the Saudi initiative really mean it. And while they really mean it, they have all the conditions uh, to uh, keep uh, that agreement with Israel that will last forever and not uh, for uh, 30 years only. Uh, I believe that what's going on these days in the Middle East is not a question about Israel, not at all. What's going on these days, who is going to take control of all the Middle East? Is it going to be the West or Iran? And that's the real story that we are looking at these days in the Middle East. What would be the future of that region that is the most important region in the world? Not because we live here, but because for Europe, for instance, it's the gate to go to Africa or to the Far East by the sea. It's the only way for them to do it. Uh, 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 politically, it's a very important place. Militarily, but first and foremost, economically. Because all the reserves of oil for the next 150 years are located here. And that's why it's so important to do everything we can in order to keep those moderation Arab countries are keeping their moderation and not moving toward extremism. 
So while you are coming with those questions, you should ask yourself what needs to be done from now on because those countries may be found out that cannot rely on the West in the future. And of course the Iranians are trying to take control of the Middle East. They are trying to become a nuclear superpower and if they will take control of those oil fields, they would be able, of course, to develop that nuclear power and to become one of the major superpowers in the world. And we don't want all the world to beg those Iranians to get more oil in the future. It will be, of course, a catastrophe. So that is the main issue that we have to discuss with. What will be the future of the Middle East? If it's going to be a democracy or not is very important. Human rights, rule of law, freedom of press and freedom of speech that should be given to those peoples. But I think in a global aspect, we should find out what will be the future by looking about the real players that are trying to take a, a part of that play here in the Middle East. First and foremost, of course, the Iranians. But isn't there a problem Hasn't something gone wrong that after 30 years of peace with Egypt, you are so, a, a, so many people, a, a, so many people in Egypt a, 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 you are, are, you are hostile moving, to, you, to, to you, Israel? You are moving once again to the same question. I don't see it as an Israeli-Egyptian issue or an Israeli-Tunisian or an Israeli-Palestinian. Not at all. All of us are in the same boat. You like it or not, but you should understand and realize that Israel and Europe, Israel and the West, we are all in the same boat. And we are looking at the Middle East not as an Israeli issue, we should look at it in much more widened look. Not just in Egypt, but elsewhere in the Arab world, is not based on anything except Iranian influence? Has nothing to do with the Palestinian conflict? As I see it these days, Everything that is taking place or uh, all the earthquakes that we are facing in the Middle East has no connection to Israel. So you can ask uh, maybe those who maybe don't like Israel, what is the reason that they are well, trying tell you what they told to me change the, the, said, the type of the regimes in their countries? Is it connected to Israel? There is no connection to Israel. You know, uh, 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 something that is going behind it, it's much bigger. Then the Israeli Palestinian or the Israeli Egyptian, the Israeli Jordanians. Sure. It's not the story. The story these days uh, in the Middle East is totally different one. And what we have to look at it, if those moderate Arab countries will continue and will succeed to keep their moderation or not, that's what should be interesting in our view, in the uh, eyes of the West, in all of those uh, democratic countries. And not all the other issues, I think it's so too, it's too small. So where do you see it? Where, where do you think if you I mean, it's OK, looking into a crystal ball, it's difficult to predict. But where do you see Egypt going in the next six months, two years uh, as this process continues? Now we've seen the old re regime knocked off the top. Clearly, there is a there is a very fluid situation now. I think that the uh, answer can be given not only by the way of behavior of the Egyptians, but how the West will behave toward uh, uh, the developments there in Egypt and in all the Middle East. Because so what, think, what, should, what do you think the West should be doing? I think what needs to be done, of course, uh, all of those demands to keep uh, democracy and to keep human rights and rule of law are very, very important. But sometimes it should be implemented in a way that won't bring the extremists to power. I was asked by one of your colleagues about the new developments you know in the one more political party that is having 60,000 missiles and rockets and all kind of weapons that they are using against their neighbors. Do you know, have you heard about the labor, the conservatives or the liberals in the UK? that are having big warehouses with missiles and rockets that are uh, launching uh, toward France. It's ridiculous to look at those groups or movements as political parties. Are you worried something similar could happen in Egypt if the Brotherhood gets support from Iran? It's not only in the... 
Uh, well, Egypt is just, it's, it's just, this is, this is the latest, the, the, the latest it's, one, it's, I'm not saying It's not that. only Egypt, it's Egypt and Lebanon and Tunisia and Yemen and, and all of those in Algeria, all of those countries, the question is who will take the lead there? Will it be the extremist powers or will it be the moderates? That's the main question that should be asked. And that's what needs to be done these days by those big superpowers, by the West, to make sure that the moderates finally will prevail. Otherwise, it will move to the ends of the extremists that in one way or another, they are of course the front base of Iran in each of their countries. So, do you, th I mean, do you think the Iranians are in there in Egypt at the moment? The Iranians are everywhere. The Iranians are trying to change the types of the regimes everywhere. Even the Hamas, that they are not Shias. But still, they are trained, they are financed by Iran, they are uh, uh, getting everything that is needed by Iran, because in the eyes of the Iranians, first they have to bring them to power, the extremists. And if the Hamas will take the lead, and not Abu Mazen, and not Salam Fayyad, that of course will help them to come to their final uh, 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 plan, that it will be to take control of all the Middle East. Do you think we in the West are in denial then of, of what's going on in the Middle East? I think sometimes you look at the developments in the Middle East in a Western way that is not really a, 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 a like you should do it. Because here, for instance, while we have decided to withdraw from Lebanon, in the Western eyes, in the Western attitude, the Western way of looking at it, it was a move toward peace. In the eyes of the Hezbollah, it showed them the Israeli weakness. Before that, when we had the Intifada and it brought the Oslo Accords in the, end of, in the eyes of the Palestinians, it shows them that it's the Israeli weakness while they launch rockets and missiles from Gaza toward Israel, and we have decided to disengage, as they look at it, they believe it shows them that Israel is weak. Of course it's not. Of course we did it because we thought it's a move toward peace and we should try it. That's why we had all of those agreements with the Palestinians. Or we have decided to disengage. But not always to look at our uh, uh, moves in the same way that we believe they should look at it. And that is very different from the Western way of thinking and the Arab way of thinking. It's not equal most of the time. But, excuse me for being, if I've got this wrong, but you're not, you're not suggesting that what happened in Egypt has also got the hand of Iran behind it, or you, or you do think that? No, but I said that most of the time the Iranians were trying to help those groups to undermine the regimes. Only about six months ago, or a year ago, I don't remember, they caught a cell of uh, the Hezbollah, uh, some terrorists that were there in Sinai. Have you heard about it? Then? And of course that cell of the Hezbollah was trained and financed by the Iranians. And it was uh, one mo more move of their big plan to undermine the regime of Mubarak before uh, what's going on these days. It was, it's a big plan that they are trying to implement for years. They are trying to undermine the moderate Arab regimes in order to bring those extremist powers, extremist powers to, uh, uh, to take the lead there. And when they will do it, for them, as it looks, it will be much easier to be those that will come instead of those moderate Arab countries.